kind of the world, you're ready to go for my you know, me too. <laughs> but I thank God for allowing me to be here. This is indeed a privilege to stand for the people of God. Whether it's one or one hundred, it's a privilege. Amen. I consider myself just a servant of the Most High God. Amen. And I do not stop with other people like to say, I am not perfect. I am not stuck in that. Because as God spoke to me yesterday, He's teaching me and I'm going to understand. Parents can be so careful because the enemy is coming. And I heard a voice say, It's coming after our young people. My God. And it's not necessarily only the school, hmm. but it's right inside the church. Hmm. Our young people are present in the house but are absent in the spirit. Yeah. And it's our job to teach them yeah. how to harness the access of authority and power. Yeah. As Eli taught Samuel, when you hear the voice again, son, speak, Lord, thy servant here. Yeah. It's time to allow our young people to actively participate in the worship. Worship is not a play thing. It's not a to take common. I have learned that worship is. <laughs> the mistake the way we have learned, we're learning it. Worship is total obedience to God. And we can't play with it. Amen. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Parents and standards with the focus. When we come in the house of God, it's one to take our kids to church. We're going to take them into the, take them into the presence of God. We are comfortable making them be present, but not getting into the presence of God. And that's what we need to work on. I thank God for all of you to stand before you. I give the Holy Spirit all the honor, the architect. Thank God for the leaders of this house. Yeah. Dear friends, for 12 years, 12 years we have stood in ministry together, many of you. I honor Pastor Kyle Henry, Pastor Money Henry, every evangelist and ministers in their respective places, every member of this house, the people. I give a greeting from New Life. Worship Center for all spring. It's a church where God is doing new things. Surprising things. Things that blow my mind. Amen. Amen. So while you're there, let's turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 3. We're going to read from verse 1 to 6. And when you found it, just stand in your feet real quickly. We're going to read these few script verses and get into the business at hand. Genesis chapter 3, we give a verse 1, 4 to 6, we stand on your comments, we'll keep it in your body. As long as you're incapacitated, we stand to your feet. Musician, please stand. We're reading the word of God. It's not something common, something we play with. Amen. And if you don't mind reading from the new picture version, we've got a lot of versions. Yes, verse 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it. Nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Pause for a second. Nor shall you do what? 
Nor should it do what? Touch it. Nor should it do what the people? Touch it. Amen. Continue. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for the fruit, that, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed thick leaves together and made themselves coverings. Amen. Amen. Come on, let us pray. 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 Father, I know what the temple that we are privileged to be up one more day. Father, that you have seen fit for us to be here today. Let us be ritualistic. Let it be purposeful, God. Let it be effective, God. Yes, Let today be a day, Father, will pound in our heart in eternity. Yes, All knowing, God. You know every need, every situation, every condition. Yes, so we place them into your hands. Yes, we place your people in your hands, God. Yes, so minister your people, God. Yes, ah, Father, God, breathe again in this place. Yes, breathe in their lives. Yes, breathe in their minds. As you adjust your attitude, my God, breathe again and take full control of this atmosphere. Oh God, these are your people, your servant Solomon said, God, give me an understanding art so I may know how to judge your people, God. God, I pray for us to understand to break down in this place today, run through this place today, shut down in this place today, Father God, like never before. Let's have your way again, God. As we turn it all over to you, we step back, God, and tell you to pile the way. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 I want to talk to you on the subject stay in the confinement of holiness. Amen. Stay in the confinement of holiness. Now, let's. Do some things before we make it home. We're not gonna be walking and moving around and pay attention to the word of God. Amen. And he's tricking us in the house of God. So it's time for us to pay attention to the things of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what is the topic is staying in the confinement of holiness. And it came about when God spoke to me about four things the believers need to have to reap the benefit of God. And the enemy attack us. In order for us to be effective believers, and that was because of the people in the cycle where we go through the motion and go to the ritualistic movement and miss the move of God, correct? I come and give and miss the purpose. God gave us four unique things. I'm going to deal with one of them today. The first one is the sensory cortex. That's one of the places where the enemy comes and messes up in. The sensory cortex. That include our five senses, which is our seeing, our hearing, our tasting, our touching. The attack us in our sensory cortex. The second one, when it then becomes uh, and try to infiltrate, is our belief system. Uh, you know that goes under our attack a lot, our belief system. The third one, and the fourth one is, uh, I'm sorry, the third one is application. And we find we lose a lot of people right there. We look, it's easy to believe, but apply our belief to the next warfare. Because to fast can be, uh, be take me, cutting off and letting go of me, and loving back to the point where I'm learning to release out the old ways. So the application where we're losing a lot of people there. And the last one, that's what we find everybody wants to hang out, to receive. Everybody wants to receive God's blessing. That's why we see these, you know, we're passing them. And that's why sometimes we're quicker to run when we hear blessings sermons. We're quicker to rush to those type of sermons yes, yes. when it's talking about blessings. So everybody wants to hang the blessing and the receiving end, and that's the last part of it. Yes. If you're disqualified from all three, you can receive the portal. You see, we want to do the receiving, but they can't do it until they've met the central cortex. That's where God speaks to you. You can see the vision, you can work towards it, you can believe it in your heart. 
And then you want to apply it to the belief. But everybody want to hang on to the receiving. Yeah. Want to receive the big church, want to receive the big offering, want to receive the big job, but there's no work put into it. Right. But if you allow it to come back, I'll touch on it. So the first one we're going to look at is the center of cortex, and under that we're going to look at staying in the confinement of holiness. Right. Let me say this before to you right away. Holiness is respect of no person. Right. You're short, you're fat, you're gifted, you're not gifted, you're black, you're white, you're brown. It doesn't respect who you are. It doesn't respect your sleep. It doesn't respect your money. It doesn't respect your degrees. Holiness has no respect for a man. Uh, the only the angels in Isaiah chapter 6 saw Jesus, saw God. And the word declared, his holiness was so powerful, they covered their face and cried, Holy! Only thing can come from them when they see God's face is holy. Holiness has no respect for a person. Uh, you have to understand when, you're sweat, when, it, when the topic says, stay within the confines of holiness, I am no longer locked into my own thought of what I want to do. Oh God. I can do the way I choose to do it. I can show the church when I feel like showing up because there are assigned time to show up. Oh and that's when your holiness show up. So you're not, you're not short of that time. You missed it. Oh God. Jesus. We're intentionally doing things and messing up with God and thinking God can forgive me and that's it. God does not do that. Here comes Eve walking around. And the enemy presented to her an opportunity. An opportunity to step over the person like that. Man, man, man like that they those things. They're frogs. To step over the person like that. And we would often time we're faced with conflict in our life. We're faced with situation in our life. We're faced with things that allow us. Come on, you people. Hello, you too. Stay focused, man. Stay focused. That's where you get us. Stay focused. And we're watching the enemy come in to sniff us out. He's trying to take our life, to take our joy, to take our peace. But do you know, Satan never tells for me, he chose to give it up. I can't tell you what he He chose to give it up. She made a choice to give up what God told her to protect. She made a choice to let go of what should be protected. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm to guard your heart. Yes, yes. But we're refusing to guard things today because I want to get in the way I choose to get it. Yes, yes. But we cannot go against what God has lined up and set up. Mm. And the need to not keep from it. But it's sad when the enemy came and first of all, the attack her sense of the fortress yes. are here. Yes, yes, yes. And her can be a God all over the moon into the things of God. My Lord, my Lord. We're faking these things, minister. Go ahead. And they are all that. Because oh, the one that says the gift won't get you into the holiness. The gift was given to help man. Yes. The gift is not for God, it's for man. The purpose of what man need to work on to complete the task that given. Oh but we're stuck on the gift. Mm. And when the attack her here, it draws our attention. So no longer can she hear God saying to her, Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to be messed up the church because for hearing is connected to the wrong thing. Amen. Amen. It's connected to the wrong thing. Yes, yes. And you can't tell us. That we're not sin. Jesus. You cannot tell us that we're not doing because we're coming to church looking nice and sounding good, still singing, still worshiping, still sounding like I have an anointing, but I'm still disconnected from God. Oh because the moment I've given in my ears, I've cut myself off from the holiness of God. Oh my God. So what if I want to find Matthew chapter 4? I'm not going to find Matthew 27. And it's the seven verse six. Forty-six. For the last words of Christ. Yes. And it's the seven verse forty-six. Praise God. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
I'll drop to Matthew chapter 3. Go to verse 16. Verse 16 said the last two verses. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove yes. and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Isn't that a little contradictory? He just, two years, three years ago, he depended on this love son. But three years later, the son said, Daddy, where are you? You see, holiness can't go to the prison. Unholiness can't go to the prison of God. He took on the sin of the world and God, no, I can't do this. You see, so the moment you just, the moment you don't depend on sin, you're disconnected from the Father. He takes the word, this is my son. He made it personal. But two years later, when he was having all this sin, I've got to step back from this. I'm a son from the Father. When you are sick, sick to God. When you are disconnected from God. When you are disconnected from His holiness, God will turn His back on you. His holiness cannot stand in the presence of sin. Two verses later in Genesis chapter 3, He showed up and said, he never called Eve. Who did he call? Adam. The priest of the family. What happened, Adam? You were Christian, what happened? What happened to your community? What happened to your job? What, what happened to your house? What happened? What happened? You're coming to church. What happened to your friends? What, what we're losing our community? What happened? What, what happened? You, you're holy. You're connected to me. So why are we having this problem now? What happened? Why is it like the neck, the church and the community? What happened? What have you been doing? We're comfortable sitting down and sounding good and deep, right? But where's the holiness of God? Where's the rest of you? Because I had you in mind all week. Come on. I've been, oh my God. Come on. Come on. Right. See, the moment we start having a conversation with, with, with our emotion, you know what the enemy does? He blocks us out. He blocks us out. The first thing he do is block our, our, our um, black voice from our hearing. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy us. He comes to kill communication. He comes to kill the connection. My God, he comes to kill the connection. I'm in good business. I'm in right standing. Yes. So the first thing you do is disconnect you. What? So, 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 so you start becoming distracted. You start coming on time. Yes. Things you used to do, you used to, used to have an unwind thirst to get up and read. You stop doing it. Why? Because it's speaking to your ears. Yes. And every now and again, you listen. Yes. And things that affect your spirit. The, the old thing that for years ago, you're still dealing with it. You're sitting like a wound thing. And I'm going to lick them and talk about them and not with them. And you're still walking with them. And keep walking. And the more he does. You can't hear me, right? Yeah. Because at first, you can hear God. Yes, 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 yes. At first, when you go first, you can hear God. He never first, he never stopped when he said, push it not touch the food. He continued. Yes. Because the first thing you're going to do is come in cunning. To give us something you can do. Yeah. I can pray and still do this. Yeah. I, 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 I can lead worship and still, and still do this. Yeah. But when I realize that there's a muffling, hey, hey, hey. Uh, there's, there's a muffling that is connecting me from the holiness of God. Yeah. And because I'm not become so comfortable now, I'm not realizing that Satan is disconnected. Yeah. Oh, but I can hear something. I don't hear the full sentence, but that's incorrect. Because what I'm doing, I'm half the 
confirmation of the whole thing. So what's going to happen? I'm going to do things half the way. When we go with Christ, we're going to go all the way. The sun goes all the way to Calvary. He went for me. He never stopped all the way. He fell down when he got back home. I got to finish this. I got to go with this. So he did. The first thing he does is, you mess up your hair.
day after day, month after month. Why is it one thing and what we think? Why is it one thing and project? If I'm missing it up, why is it oh, one thing? Lord, my Lord. God, where are you? And I've been waiting down here for you. Yes. Brother, come, walk, come, follow me. Follow me. Come, come, come brother, come. Come, Pastor. Come, Minister. Come. I'm here. Come. I'm here. Come. Your blessing is here. Come, move. Come. Take this down here. Come. You stand your money right there. Come. Come out of that city. Come. 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 I gotta get to it. I gotta get to it. 
get him. So the moment is jump start. Things start shifting. It start shifting. It start shifting. And God said, Come on, goodness, take it off. Clear up his ear. Uh, take off the blind cord. Step in. And so, eat will fit into holiness. My God. 